Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Sunday and it's time for a review show special. Today I'm going to be looking at a project by uh, my very good friend David Penn. Now Dave doesn't bring out stuff very often and when he does there is always, and I mean always, a buzz from the Magic community about what he's got out. And this is no exception. Everybody is talking about Pi Revelations. A lot of people don't know what it is. What is Pi Revelations? What does it do? I've heard people say, well, you know, Pi Revelations, other people have done things with Pi before. Isn't it just similar to that? What does it do? What's the effect? What makes it unique? Well, you know, there's so much interest in this project that we're doing a review show special on it. So here's what's gonna happen. First of all, I'm gonna do an interview with the man himself, Mr. David Penn. We're gonna be talking through um, all about his project. We're going to talk about absolutely everything. We're going to, uh, I'm going to ask him a bunch of questions and then we're going to come back here into the studio and I'm going to actually give it a full review. And I think it's really important to, uh, to tell you guys, even though I'm very good friends with David Penn, uh, this review is going to be 100% honest. If I don't like it, I'm going to tell you I don't like it. If I love it, I'm going to tell you I love it. Um, so yeah, that's what it's going to be today. It's going to be a, a review all about Pi Revelations. So without further ado, here's what we're going to do. We're going to cut straight over now to the interview with David Penn. It's going to run about 15 minutes and then we're going to come back into the studio. So I'm here with David Penn, uh, who is currently modeling <laughs> his brand new creation. Dave, I had to get you on Magic TV because the internet is buzzing about this, like buzzing everywhere. People are talking to me and they're saying, you've got to speak to Dave, you've got to speak to Dave. We want to, we want to know the inside information about this. And I know you've been doing like an almost world tour of different places. You're with the <laughs> Fancy, you're with the, with the guys on the Magician's Advice podcast. Everybody wants to know all about, all about the, the Pi book test that you've brought out. So Pi Revelations. It's so exciting. Uh, well, first of all, uh, a couple of things. So, uh, insinuating that I was modelling it, Craig, when I've had the likes of James and Marina Harrington on the trailer, who who are professional models. I don't, I <laughs> in say, Dubai I as well as made, they pray, that made they probably made it look better with the Dubai backdrop rather than <laughs> sort of Northampton in lockdown. You know, <laughs> well, there's a there's a real juxtaposition on the tutorial, you know, because obviously the, the live performances are all in Dubai. And then there's a, a studio performance, which is myself and Sean Hayden in my back garden, at like a, a wooden, uh, you know, sort of garden furniture thing just against the fence. And it is a real juxtaposition. But yeah, th thank you for having me on. Amazing. Uh, this sold out on pre-order. Uh, it's, it's actually sold out twice now at Murphy's Magic and they've had to get restocked and that's in the space of a week and it sold out on pre-order alone which is absolutely unbelievable. That and never happens these days and that's something it's rare for anything to sell out on pre-order. I mean they have told me that they've said it's quite this year it's been really rare to, for that to happen mm -hmm. but before we talk about what it is can I say what it isn't? Yeah, because some people are getting a little bit confused what Pi Revelations is. What it is is very exciting, but I need to make it clear what it isn't. So there has been, and you use the phrase Pi book test. Uh, there's been book test style routines done with Pi before. Uh, Sean Taylor and Richard Padden have published extensive work on this. In fact, uh, I think it was Richard that had a routine called the human abacus which is out with alakazam magic that, that yeah. has actually got some amazing very large theatrical props with it that add a lot of production value to this routine so if you're fascinated with pi as a plot you want to check that out uh, and also probably the most notable of modern times he brought this out about 10 years ago was vincent hayden who brought out his pi book test and these two routines that came before were very similar. They gave you the amazing ability to look like you could recite Pi. And that is incredible. So you could say to somebody, as with Vincent's book, open the book in like the first three quarters, because I've only memorized that much. They would then call out a certain amount of numbers, and then you'd ascertain in your mind where you were, and then you could carry on indefinitely if you like for quite a long time and 
this sort of memorization of pi, being able to recite pi, you can't do that with my book, which is Pi Revelations. If you want to recite pi, you need to look back at the work that's been done before. Also, Vincent had a kicker as well, where they could say their birthday and you could reveal their birthday in the book. So what's Pi Revelations? Pi Revelations, quite simply, it's a revelation in Pi. It means that you can reveal anyone of 10,000 possibilities from 0000, zero, zero, zero all the way up to 9999. Nine, nine, nine. And because everything that's working for you that actually needs no memory work at all, because of all that working in the background, no skill, no memory work, you can know instantly where a chosen number, a four digit number is in the book within the first 50,000 decimals of pi. And you can send somebody straight to it. It's on page 26, line five, 11 across. And you would send them straight to their chosen number. And that's the strong point about this. It's a chosen number that means something to the spectator. So this could be a date. It could be a random time of day. It can be a pin number. Anything that could be represented by a four digit number, the passcode to your mobile phone, something that the spectator deems to be secret information, you are able to peek the location and then reveal it in Pi. So, and before yeah. we go on, let me just ask you a question. How would you present this then? Because with, with the previous routines that you've talked about, it's a demonstration in memory technique. There's no other way to do it but a demonstration in memory technique. It seems that with what you're offering here, yes, you could do the same presentation, but because of what you're, what you're able to do, it's, it's opening up a lot more opportunities presentationally. Yeah, so what, what I like to do personally is to create a random phone uh, you know i'm doing a lot of things with mobile phones these days if it doesn't have a mobile phone with it it's not in my acts right now that's just what i'm doing you don't have to use a mobile phone there's other ways to to do it at some point you'll need to involve one but mine there is a definite sort of routine point of view that i prefer to start with the calculator there's all sorts of other routines on the tutorial we can go into that in a moment but I prefer that they make a calculation on their phone. They generate a number. And when they've generated that number, you, from apparent memory, not reciting it, but from memory of its position, I think James refers to it, the, I forget what he said on the tutorial. I'm not even sure it's cognitive mind reading or something. I don't know. I don't even know if it's a real thing. Uh, but... He says cognitive intuition or something like that. I need to look that up now, what that is. But from knowing the number, you're able to then tell them where it is in the book. So they go looking for it in the book. But of course, at that point, they've told you that number. They've blurted it out. They've, you've seen it on the screen. So then you take it a level up. You say, what if we could do this with a number that nobody knows, which is that lovely line that we used in the trailer. What if we could do this with a number that nobody knows, like your pin number? And then you get them to think of their number. And as if you're picking up on it in a more sort of conventional book test style, you then receive the number and then tell them where it is in the book and they go to see it. And what I really like about this revelation, I've spoken about this with quite a few people, is the fact that when they go looking for it, they automatically know the end result. They, they kind of know it's going to be there because you're a magician, right? You shouldn't fail. So if they've got a number in their mind and you're saying, go here, go this line, count this many across, it really does produce that kind of reaction where people are going, no, no, no. And they're building themselves up going into it. And I think that's why whenever I've performed it and I, I'm getting so many messages from people this weekend after the release, Craig, and quite a lot of them are making the same observation. 
they're actually surprised. They knew it was going to get a, a good reaction, but they're surprised at the level of reaction because it's bigger than they thought. And it's because it's there in print. You're not generating the prediction at that moment. You're not going, think of your number. OK, I'm going to write something down. And is it that? The book is always there from the start. And it's got that level of permanence to it, which is always good with any prediction, because it's always there within the first 50,000 decimals of pi. Yeah. You just send them to it, and that's the revelation. And without fail, like they filmed it about four times for the trailer, but of course we chose the best lighting, the best sound, and the one where the guy wasn't coming over serving drinks and that kind of thing. But without fail, when James and Marina performed it, Every single time you can see the volunteers going, no, no, no. And you see them going through that process as they're looking for their bit of information that means something to them. It's not like think of a word in a book yeah. and the word is keeping. Great. Perfect. If this is the time that your child was born and you send them to that time in the book, that means so much more. And that is the real power in Pi Revelations. And you can reveal anything easily without memory, without skill, within the 50,000 decimals of Pi. And I think there's something that people need to understand here, which is you've created a lot of magic. And I know you well enough to know that there's certain tricks that you created to market like and there's no problem with that you probably ended up doing it as well but stuff like the invisible deck kicker hypnoasis it was created to market first and foremost and then maybe found your way into your apps this is more of a refraction creation yeah. in that you've created it for your own acts first and foremost and then chosen to market it is that would, would, and i think that's a big distinction this isn't something that somebody's created to bring to market this is something that you've created for you as the tech magician that you're choosing to share with everybody. And I think that's important for people to know that. I, I love the, the tech feel of Pi. I love the fact that it's essentially a code and it's an interesting reveal. And I always wanted it as an interesting reveal as a pin number in my own show. But it's also a very interesting reveal, Craig, because you don't have to tell the audience as a whole the pin number either. There's no other way to reveal it normally, apart from turn the board around and show it and go, is that your pin number? Yeah. But it's a very interesting reveal for somebody to find the passcode to their mobile phone. You see the reaction on the face, you see the shock, you see them mime a swear word, and then they just tell the audience that it's the passcode to their mobile phone. And then you, the line I use in my show is, I suggest you change it. And then there's a music change and that's it. But it's a really interesting reveal when they see it in print. It's, it's quite scary, actually. And it gets more of a reaction than a word in a book test. Paul Ramhani said that in the Vanish magazine review. It got product highlight, which is unbelievable from Vanish magazine. And he actually picked up on that. The power of the number that means something to that spectator is so much more than any book test. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and this is something that would work in so many different environments. Like this would work on a stage. I know you perform this on stage in front of, in conferences to thousands of people, but it's also the sort of thing that you could go to a, a banquet or a parlor show or mix and mingle or restaurant workers could use it it's something that will work virtually it'll work in pretty much it, it, you think of an environment in which magic can be performed in this will work in that environment which is rare you don't see a, a, you don't see many releases that transcend literally almost every single performing environment it is crazy and the thing that's so inspiring is i just this weekend somebody came up with something better than what I was offering on the tutorial. And it was amazing. It was actually the Guidel Fratch, who's the creator of the Architect of Predictions app. He came up with something and he just submitted an idea. 
and combined with the genius of Michael Murray, it actually made what I was teaching already even better on the tutorial. And I was immediate, I immediately added it to the tutorial, but I thought this is gonna happen all the time. So I created a Facebook group and already we've got quite a few members in there. And if you wanna join, uh, you can follow the link on the tutorial to the Facebook group, but answer the questions. You have to answer the questions and then you'll be automatically admitted as well as agreeing to the rules as well. But it became apparent to me this week that the best trick with Pi Revelations is probably yet to be invented. Because of the foundations the method is built upon, people are gonna play with the method even more and they're going to get other people involved with the creation of further methods. And already three major app developers since launch have come on board. Uh, Benki Smith this week has sent me a video of rolling four dice to create a random number. So you roll four dice, generate a random number, and then you send them to where it is in the book. And then it's the same time that you set on the watch. All at the same time, this is happening. And it's crazy. And this, this guy came up with this after like a day and a half's work. It's unbelievable. But it's because of the method that I've created and the fact that anybody that wants to use the method with the book as a final revelation can just use it. And, and I think that's an important distinction for people that don't really understand everything that's gone on behind, behind the scenes with this. You could buy Pi Revelations and you could perform it without needing apps or without needing anything or buying special apps. You could literally just, 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 just do it. And that's not a problem. And it'll be a yeah. good trick. It'll be a really good trick. It'll be a good trick. That's a really good word. It'll be a good trick. A good trick. But you combine it with some of the apps. And uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, when we were on the Business Product View, I was into apps before you were. I was always going about, let's do the app of the week. Let's do the app of the week. That's true, actually. I'd actually forgot that, Craig. And it I is true. You were there. you were always the one showing me the apps. That's was, very I, true. I pushing for the apps. And I've been buying and using apps for probably a decade now, I have never <laughs> seen. Very true. I've never seen a product come out that's got this level of app support. Do you know what? I'd not even thought of that. And you must be watching me and all my publicity now and go, that <laughs> that hypocrite. <laughs> you used, used to say to me, "Forget about the apps. Nobody wants to hear about apps." <laughs> You said that to me once. Them. You said nobody wants to hear about apps, Craig. And I'm like, come on, let's do this one. If it's we have true. To. It is true. I have to admit it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, that... I've, I've never seen this level of app support. Like literally every app developer that I know of, every app on my phone syncs up with Pi Revelations because I've got a load of apps on my phone. And every single yeah. one of them have come on board with your product. Every single one of them. And people like Mike Phillips, who like, you know, I've got to mention Mike when I talk about this book. Uh, Daryl Rose and I had a chat when I was first developing the idea, but it's just an idea. And I did not have the skills to bring this to fruition. So Daryl said, look, speak to Mike Phillips. And we spoke about it. I talked about what I exactly what I wanted to do. But it was Mike that came back days, days later and said, I think I've got like a working version. I think we've got it. And it was just unbelievable to see this mad genius take an idea and then go, yeah, let's, I think we can make that work. Because I have, because of what I do now all the time, I do know lots of app developers and I speak to them all the time and say, even if you've got something you're not bringing out, let me know because I might be able to use it in my stage show. Maybe I can just buy it or something like that. And so I have good relationships with people, but speaking to Mike and then him being able to come up with this is absolutely incredible. And he's also produced like a companion app. And we do, I do feel that I need to keep saying it, Craig, you don't need apps, but it's it like an app just supercharges this whole thing. 
and he's produced a companion app that links with Pete Smith that speaks in your ear and it's just ridiculous. You could just stand there and just go, yeah, there it is in the book. Well, you know what? I think the comparison I'd give it, Dave, is you could go to the shop and buy yourself a TV and you could have a good experience, BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, Channel Four, but then you can link it up to Sky and Netflix and Amazon Prime and Disney Plus and whatever it is and suddenly your viewing experience as somebody who's watching TV grows exponentially. You've gone from just five channels to a million channels and you're gonna have a much better experience. Yes, you can just watch a TV and just watch the five channels and yeah, be okay. Or you can take it to the next level. It would okay. a bit more money. Can but... I mention a couple of my favorite app developers that are working with it? Uh, Calculon is a calculator a uh, toxic force calculator that does so much more than that, but it works on the spectator's phone. So as you borrow the phone off the spectator and within five seconds, boom, you've got an applet running on their phone, which enables you to perform everything that you can do with a toxic force calculator, all pre fully loaded on the spectator's own phone. You can get rid of it at the end of it. And within seconds, there's not even any evidence that anything was running on their phone. That's Calculon by Thoughtcast Magic. The architect of predictions, oh my God. If As soon as you know the four digit number, when you've peaked the information, however you do that, it's all taught on the tutorial for free. As soon as you know that information, you unlock your phone, go to your camera roll. Five days ago, you took a picture of you outside in the forest, holding a picture saying, go to, page this, go to line this, go to five across. And you've got a picture of you holding it that looks absolutely genuine that you took days ago in a completely different location. They read the information off the photograph on your camera roll, go to the book, there's their memorable information. Here's another thing you can do with architect of predictions, get people to choose a page. So you've got a normal book test presentation. You say, hey, this book's got 98 pages. The first five haven't got much on there. It's just the history of pi and that kind of thing. So let's start with page six. Give me any page number from six all the way to 98. They give you the number. You say, OK, there's 18 lines. Give me any number all the way up to 18. They give you the line number. And then you say, OK, all the way up to 21. Uh, you, let's go uh, just choose a number on that line they choose the number on that line then you show them the photo the photo now is you in the same forest with the four digit code that's in the book then you say hang on that's my photo you picked a page you picked a line you picked an across number go to that position they go there and it's the same number as in your photo from five days ago. Ridiculous. That's 50,000 possibilities apparently, and you manage to nail it every time. Finally, I'll just mention Inject as well, like Gregor Starmy with Inject. That's one of the best apps out there. He's just talking about Pi. He introduces the book. He borrows two phones, his own phone is not even in sight. He says, I'm going to Google some numbers in Pi that mean something to me. And he puts the phone down. And if you've got Inject, you can try this. Have you got your phone there, Craig? You, have you got Inject? I haven't got Inject on me at the moment, no. Oh, right. Okay. I've got my phone. Well, I have, but I haven't got, I haven't got the phone with me. No worries. Uh, and then with the other spectator's phone, you get them to Google any four digit number that means something to them. So a four digit number with a question mark immediately after it. So you're gonna ask Google what this four digit number means to every, everyone else on Google. So it might be a Lego set or something like that. But they Google the number and find out the information. You have a bit of a chat about that. And then you say, go back to the original uh, phone and say, remember, I said I was going to Google a number in Pi. And when you turn the phone over, you've got the number that you Googled, which is 30 hyphen five hyphen seven. Go to page 30, line five, seven across. And that's the four digit number the first person randomly chose and put in their phone. Two borrowed phones. Your phone's not even in sight. It's just the power of inject. That's incredible. There, 
there are so many app developers coming on board yeah. all the My time. My favourite app at the moment is The Stranger. You, you've got app support from them, from The Stranger, from Jonathan Levitt, haven't you? You can, Jonathan was one of the first. He just got it straight away, uh, which is why his app is one of the best out there. And as soon as I told Jonathan about it, he was like, send me that book. I've got to have that book. And so I said, how many have you got? I need one now. So I got one straight off to Jonathan, which is why he's in the trailer as well, because he was one of the first to get me that sort of great life performance footage on Zoom. And he uses the book to generate the number. And then he's calling the stranger. And uh, so the, the stranger's number, he's choosing elements of pi. Mm. So they get used to this selection process with random people choosing the numbers within pi to create the phone number. Prior to that, somebody's revealed a bit of personal information, which is something to do with them, a date or a time. Jonathan's full performance is on the tutorial and his, his scripting to introduce the book is brilliant. And then they call the stranger. This is a stranger, right? You've never met them. And you go, hey, friend, can you just name any page, any line and across? And they go, I don't know, you're bothering me, but there's a page, there's a line, there's a number. And they go to that position and the stranger has given the exact location of one of your audience's members, dates of birth or something like that. Incredible. Incredible. It really is. Uh, yeah, as you know, I haven't got this before the next section of this of this video. I'm going to actually uh, have a good look at it and, and, and give it a review. But one thing that I'm getting from speaking to you, Dave, is this is a, I know you perform it at high end conferences, but a lot of magicians don't perform at the same level as you. And there's a lot of restaurant workers and people like that out there. What I'm getting from this is you can have this one book on you and a phone and you could literally go around all night doing a different routine with the same props. So you do it yeah. with a stranger on the first table. Then the next table, you do it with the inject handling, with Googling images or whatever. Then the next one, you do it a completely different way. Then the next one, you've got all these apps on your phone and you've got the book and your phone with you. You've got access of, to perform, in essence, the same trick, but in a completely different way, five, six, seven times in a night. So we know in the UK as well, Craig, it's just, I'm, I am referring to your point, which is how many ways you can use it. I'm just about to start to try and kickstart my business again, the live performance side of it, and start doing wedding fairs again. And the fact that pi is such an incredible number anyway it's such a magical number it's infinite it's non-recurring it goes on the odds of finding somebody you can equate that to love mm -hmm. and i think it's very interesting that during a wedding sort of exhibition or a wedding open day for a venue you can actually do an amazing effect that reveals their wedding day and they're going to go straight to Pi and see their wedding day in the book. And you've done it in an amazing way that's involving information from him, involving information from her. You're, you're saying, well, you know, I probably did that with memory, but what if we could do this with a, a number that means something to you, like your wedding date? Think of your wedding date, boom, it's in Pi, and you've just done a trick an unbelievable bit of men mentalism and magic with their wedding day. Well, you know what? If you do that at a wedding fair that's exclusive for a venue, not like one of the big open wedding fairs where everybody, not a free for all, but yeah, an exclusive venue where you're like the, the recommended supplier, you could probably get the information off them ahead of time of the people that are coming and their wedding dates. Maybe, and yeah. A list of all of that information and, and you'd already have that from a pre-show point of view. You've already got that before they even walk in the building to see you. Can you imagine if, because uh, certain ones where the, the, you've just given me an idea there that's actually terrifying, right? Which is uh, you do your pre-show, like you said, but I know certain venues, there are a couple of venues I go to, and when they have the open days, which are a bit more intimate, they encourage all the brides to talk to each other, uh, the brides and grooms to talk to each other, and they actually give them name badges 
or lanyards when they're actually invited for the night for like menu tasting and that kind of thing. So I could just imagine you're performing for one couple and then somebody just comes up, walks up and you go, think of your wedding day and you're telling them where it is in pie. And that would be possible. Within a four digit number. If you have the information, it can't be no. In fact, uh, a couple of people have said, "Hey, wouldn't this be great if it was a six-digit combination number?" Uh, we did consider it, but you've got to carry this thing around with you, and to have six digits, it would have been eight thousand pages. There is a big difference between a four-digit number with ten thousand possibilities, and uh, yeah, six digits. It's uh, a big, big, big oh, difference with regards to pages. I was, is I was thinking for a corporate client that's running a limited company, working out what their company number is beforehand. But you could just take the last four digits of their company number. You know, hey, absolutely. Uh, or exactly. if for the first for the first part of the routine, you could reveal the number, and it could be their company number backwards or something, mm -hmm. which is a technique that I've used with revealing a number as a digit. And then I've said, magicians, they do everything with mirrors or you can invert things and the number can say a different number or say a word or something like that. You can decode a number to reveal a word. There's all sorts of things you can do with regards to numbers and company names and that kind of thing. And it's not a card trick. It's not a coin trick. It's not a trick with a cup and a ball. It's something complete, unique and different that not many people have seen before, if hardly anything would have seen. And, and uh, uh, you are right, Pi is something that's intriguing to a lot of people. It's that hook, isn't it? And I've talked about this on the channel before. One of the key things is getting people's attention, hooking people's attention. This has got a natural hook to it. It's... I've said this before, I don't want to sound like at all arrogant when I say this, but it, for me, it's an intelligent reveal. It's it's the sort of thing, if you you've got that, I say guy, I don't want to be stereotypical, but it usually is a guy, if we're honest. And they're a bit sort of turning their nose up a bit to magic. And if you start to talk about pi and what pi means and that you're going to do something kind of experimental using pi, it's the sort of thing that a gentleman normally who is a little bit highbrow turning their nose up to the magician who might want to do something normally that he thinks is only good enough for kids, uh, you know, and he's kind of dismissing that. As soon as you start talking about pie, it seems intelligent and less patronizing yeah. and makes them instantly more engaged with this kind of presentation. Totally agree. Totally agree. You know what? In just this little conversation, I've got so excited about this. I cannot <laughs> wait to go and check this out and give it a full review. Dave, this has been fantastic. Thank you for coming on the channel uh, and sharing, you, you know, it's, where can, can people get it directly from you? Because I'm all about supporting the, the, the creator. I know it's gone through Murphy's. I know it's in almost pretty much every magic dealer around the world. But can people get it directly from you? Yeah, if you get it, it is available worldwide. If you do want to get it from worldmagicshop.com, I do have a deal on at the moment where anybody uh, that buys it from us gets a free DVD that's worth sort of £30 from uh, Tom Wright from Gravity, of course, which you've reviewed. It's an amazing review, that is. And uh, Aaron Jones, and it's their DVD, Completely Mental. And there's some fantastic material on there. So you'll get that along with Pi Revelations, and that's an exclusive deal to worldmagicshop.com. There you go. So down below, you've got the URL where you can go and order it directly from uh, World Magic Shop. It is worldwide shipping directly from World Magic Shop. If you don't want to do that, your, late, your, your local magic dealer will have it. But now we're going to go back to the studio and I'm going to give this thing a, I can't believe I'm reviewing a David Penn product. <laughs> this feels wrong. Honestly, I don't think I ever would have been in a situation where I'm reviewing a David Penn product. <laughs> But that's it. We're going to go now and I'm going to review this. Dave, thank you so much. <laughs> Be afraid. <laughs> so that's Dave. Uh, I think that answered a lot of questions about what this is. The first thing I want to say, and I know David Penn is going to be watching this, and I just want to pick up on one thing that was said in the interview, which is I was the guy in the Wizard Product Review that was banging on about the apps before Dave 
made apps cool. Like, he's app guy now. He's tech guy. He's the tech magician. He knows more apps that... He's got more apps on his phone than I could ever possibly know. And he's got, like, tech companies ringing him up and going, oh, you need to do this. And it's absolutely amazing. But I remember trying to convince him to review an app on the Wizard product review. It's just hilarious, really, when you think about it. But it's so cool that he's embraced this stuff. And I think one of the... The key things that I need to bring to everyone's attention, in case you didn't pick up on in the interview, is that this thing was not designed to sell. And, and I talk about this on the channel an awful lot, which is a lot of tricks are designed to sell. The, the creator creates them for one reason and one reason only, because they think it would be a really cool trick to sell. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. I'll be honest with you. One of my best selling tricks of all time, Keymaster, I, I created it to sell. I ended up using it all the time, but it was originally created because I was like, oh my gosh, I think this would be a really good product for the community. Then you've got routines um, that aren't created to sell and they're created just for your own act. And Dave created this just for his own act as the tech magician. And in case you don't know, um, Dave is one of the top tech magicians in the world. He, he keynotes conferences everywhere doing tech magic. And when I say tech magic, I don't mean he does what everyone else does and pulls something out of a, an iPad, which is what you have to do these days to be considered uh, a tech magician. He doesn't do that. He does really innovative stuff. I've been lucky enough to sit down with Dave and listen to some of the stuff that he's doing. It's just groundbreaking. It's phenomenal. And he created this to put into that act. That should tell you how strong he thinks this is. He, this isn't something that he's not together and he goes, well, you know, I'll sell a few hundred to Murphy's and it'll make me a few quid. This is what he's put together because he thinks this is appropriate for his act that he charges a lot of money for to perform in front of tech gurus and Fortune 500 companies. And I think it's really important to make that distinction. Um, that as a creator, it's not being created to, to sell, but for his own act. Obviously, on the back of that, he sold it. And why not? I'm really glad that he has. So what do I think of this? Well, I've kind of looked into this whole um, pie thing before. And I, I, I've done uh, Vincent Hedan's uh, pie book in the past. And I actually think it's really good. Um, I think it's really good. But this is a completely different thing. Like an absolutely completely different thing. And hopefully you picked up on that uh, with the interview. This is not a demonstration of memory. Yes, you can actually do this as a demonstration of memory. But this is so much more. When you have somebody think of some personal information that they've not told you, they've not written down, they've not put anywhere. They're just thinking of that personal information. And then, boom. It immediately just, uh, you know, it, it, you predict exactly where it is in various different ways. And we'll get to that in a minute. That's incredible. This is a demonstrate. This goes above and beyond memory work. It really does. This is this. This could be played as a really powerful magic trick. This would fit into a mentalist act. And you know what? Uh, when I did the interview with Dave, I hadn't received the book. Uh, I have now. And I thought this is going to be totally impractical to do in a walk around situation. But it's really not. If you actually look at the book, first of all, it's softbound. Second of all, it would fit no problem. In, if you folded it top like that, it fits into a pocket. Um, and you might go, well, you might wreck it. Or maybe, I don't think you would wreck it. It might get a bit bent. And you might want to get two of these and have one on stage that you use on stage and one that you carry around walk around. But I think this can be done walk around. I think this can be done on big tables. I think this can be done in the biggest conference. This can be done on stage, which is where Dave's designed it to be worked in. Um, there is one thing I'm going to disagree with him about, though. There's one thing that I completely disagree with Dave Penn about. He said... Um, that if you buy Pi Revelation, then it's a good trick if you just use it as is um, without any app support. But when you actually add the apps into the mix, it becomes a miracle. Now, I do agree in one respect that adding the apps makes the routine a million times better. Well, not a million times better. I do agree it makes it better depending on the app you use, and we'll, we'll get to that as well. However, the method that has been created to do it without any apps by using the shortcuts that has been designed is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And I'm going to do a live performance in a minute. And uh, the live performance that I'm going to do, 
uh, is going to be, not with an app, it's going to be using that shortcut that Dave, um, um, that Dave put together that uses any iPhone. And I think that's really important consideration. You don't have to buy a really expensive app to do this. If this was released without any app support and you just had that method, which is a combination of techniques by Dave and Michael Murray and you know, so on and so forth, you would be more than happy because it's incredible because one, the misdirection is so strong. The routine is structured in such a logical way. First of all, you create a random number and you kind of do a demonstration of memory and you tell them exactly where that number is. And then secondly, you, um, uh, you, you then have them think of this four digit number that they couldn't possibly you couldn't possibly know and you just immediately tell them where in the book it is and and you've got all the misdirection in the world to get that information and it's done automatically as you shut the calendar cal calculator down it's brilliant absolutely brilliant the method behind that is phenomenal and um you know i've watched the live performance that dave did on sean in the garden um and it, it you know it it was just a really really strong performance and this is something that I think people are just going to love. Let me do a performance of the main routine. So the routine that you do that does not require any app support at all, I'm going to perform that routine for you. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to perform it pretty much exactly as Dave Penn did because his scripting and his routining is tight. I do plan on doing this. This is going into my act, I'll tell you that now. Uh, and I hope over time I'm going to come up with my own presentation. But initially, I'm going to use it the way that Dave uses it, because honestly, he does it so well. And you can tell it's something he's really thought through. So I'm going to give a performance of that right now. Uh, and then I'll, uh, I'll uh, you know, we'll wrap this up and we'll talk a little bit more about uh, about Pi Revelations. Right. OK, so I've got Sarah behind the camera. You're going to help me with this. Is that OK, Sarah? Yeah. And you've never seen this before, have you? No. So we're going to see what you think of this. Um, now, you used to be a teacher. Did you used to enjoy maths? Yeah, to a certain extent. <laughs> that means no, by the way. Um, what I have here is a book all about pie. Now, okay. you know that I love pie. <laughs> Not this side of pie, I love pie. <laughs> um, I didn't really know much about pie before I read this book. Do you know much about pie? A bit, yeah. Well, this is a book basically of numbers, and it's pi to 50,000 decimal places. Uh, and it's written by a guy called Professor David Neep. Um, and what's interesting is this paragraph here, it's, it, it explains what pi is at the beginning, Some really interesting, but it actually says uh, pi is an infinitely long non-repeating number, basically it's, it is infinite and also non-repeating, it's mathematically possible that any short string of numbers will appear somewhere within its unique formula. So in other words, somewhere within these 50,000 numbers is yeah. every possible four digit number you could possibly imagine. Obviously, in order to know where it'd be, you'd have to memorise all of this, which is next to impossible. But I want to try and something, okay? I'm going to try an experiment. We'll put the book over there for a minute. And, and an experiment is what a magician calls a trick when there's a very good chance it's going to go wrong. Uh, we're going to use my phone for this. I'm going to open up the calculator right here. And I'd like you to take my phone. Okay. Thank you. Now, what I want you to do, first of all, I would ask you normally to put in your year of birth, but obviously... I know your year of birth. So maybe put in the year of birth of your mom. I don't know your mom's year of birth. So put in the year that your mom was born. Okay. Yeah. Have you done that? Yeah. Now hit times. Yeah. Now what I want you to do is put in a two digit number that means something to you. It could be your age. It could be the address that you lived at when you were a kid. It doesn't really matter yeah, what. One. A two digit number, yeah. You yeah. got that? Yeah. Now take away. And what I want you to do, and this is very important, I want you to put in there a four digit number that means something to you. So maybe a pin number to a bank card, maybe a pin number to an electronic device or something, a four digit number that means something to you. Um, something that you immediately recall instantly because it's something that you use all the time. Truly, you, you've got one, yeah? I'm just thinking. She's got so many. Take your time. <laughs> Are we good? When you're done, let me know. Yeah. And then hit equals. Have we got an, a new number? Yes. Okay, let me let me have a look at that. What's the number? 2,200. 2,200. Now, technically, that number appears somewhere in this book. Okay. And you created that number completely at random, but it's going to appear somewhere in this book. Is that right? Yeah. Hang on, let me just think. 2,200. Okay. Page 76, 12 lines down, and it starts on the fourth digit along in that 12th line. You want me to look at that? Yeah, so take the book, 
76, page 76, 12 lines down, four digits across, you're going to find that number, 2,200. 12 lines down. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Am I right? Yes, 2,000. How cool is that? Yes, it's a... Is that pretty cool? Yeah. You can't see it, she's off camera. Um, but that's, that's her full face. That is totally your full face. Yeah. But here's the thing. That, that could just be me having an amazing memory. It's not, because you know my memory is not that good, but it could be me having an amazing memory. Hold on to the book, because yeah. you, I want you to think of that, that, that pin number or that four-digit number that means something to you. Okay. This is something that you use an awful lot, right? I yeah. don't know that number. You didn't write it down. You didn't tell anyone. I don't know that number, do I? No. Um, That's not going to be in here as well, is it? Is that what it's got to be in there somewhere, but I don't know how long it is. Um, hold your hand out. You're not going to know it, are you? you just touch your finger. <laughs> I got it. Page 55, line 9, 21 digits across. Page 55, line 9, 21 digits across, it'll start, and that'll be your four-digit number. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, my God. Is that the one? <laughs> you, were you fooled? Were you fooled? Yes. How good is that trick? Do you like that? That's very good. Isn't that awesome? Guys, that's a live performance. Let's go back to the studio, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wrap this whole thing up. Okay. I love that. I love that. I absolutely, completely, I can't tell you how much I love that, that idea. Um, there's two things that I want to bring to your attention before we talk about app support. The first thing is, in order to do what you just saw me do, you are going to need uh, an iPhone because the way that the shortcut works and everything will require an iPhone. Now, if you don't have an iPhone uh, and you only have Android, a lot of the app support is available on an Android phone and there's probably ways of doing it um, without without using an iPhone, I'm not too sure. I mean, I, I, I have an iPhone, so for me, it's not a problem. Uh, and it was very easy to do. I just followed the instructions on the download, installed the shortcuts, did what Dave told me to do, and boom, it's all set up on my phone. It's ready to go anytime, anywhere. Um, but if you've got an Android, you're not going to be able to do that that I just showed you. So you are going to have to probably invest, I imagine, in, in one of the... Uh, in one of the um, one of the apps. Now, the other thing that I want to bring to your attention is, and this is something that I'm going to have to do some research into myself. I'm not a mathematician. Maths doesn't interest me in the slightest. And I had no idea what pi was until uh, shortly before Dave showed me this, actually, when I was starting to look at uh, Vincent's and Anne's pi book. Uh, and I started looking into pi for that. Um, I do think it's very, very important that you have a working knowledge of pi, um, that you 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 are, you are aware of what it is, and you can speak confidently about it, because I think that you need to. If you know nothing about pi, you could do this trick, right? If you knew nothing about pi at all, and you didn't even know what it was, and you just said, "Hey, here, I've got here a book of numbers," blah blah blah, the trick would work. But a Talking about pi is an amazing hook, and I speak all the time on this channel about hooking people in, and you want to have a really good hook line, and what's the way that you hook people in? You know, turning around and saying, well, have you heard of pi? Have you heard of pi? Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, my style, I'd probably open up by saying, um, guys, I don't know if you know this, uh, I, I, I like maths. Well, when I say I like maths, I like pi. It's fairly obvious, really, isn't it? Not that sort of pi. Pi. I don't know, probably fit my style, but I digress. Um... It's an amazing hook, right? Talking about this is an amazing hook, but you need to be able to talk about it confidently, especially you never know who you're performing to. What if you're performing to a statistician or a mathematician? What happens if you're at a conference for people that use pi all the time, right? You need to know what it is. If somebody goes and asks you a question, you at least need to have a working knowledge. If you're if you if you carry this book around with you and you're you know you're professing that you've memorized pi to fifty thousand. Um, spaces or whatever it may be. I think you absolutely 100% need to know about it. It's a little bit like Rubik's Cube magic, right? You can do a Rubik's Cube trick, but I think that if you do Rubik's Cube magic, you need to be able to solve a Rubik's Cube. Because I've seen a magician in the past who does a Rubik's Cube trick, can't solve Rubik's Cube, and the guy picks it up and mixes it and says, now solve it, and the guy can't, and it looks terrible. And then it obviously is a trick. You need to know 
a bit about Rubik's Cubes. You need to, even if you can't solve it very quickly, but you can solve it in three or four minutes. I think you need to be able to solve a Rubik's Cube. I think you need to know about some of the industry jargon, like God's number and this and that and the other and algorithms and so on and so forth. I think in order to be a competent, if you're going to put Rubik's Cube magic in your act, you need to know the basics of Rubik's Cubing and speed cubing and solving a Rubik's Cube, even if it's just the basics. Well, I think it's the same with this. I think that's a very important consideration. However, luckily, the book does have a section at the beginning that talks all about pi, which I think is a lot of the information you need, but don't gloss over that. So that's the first thing. Second thing. Right, now let's talk about the app support. Um, a lot of the apps that are supporting this, I haven't got. Um, I haven't done as much with apps in the last couple of years, obviously, Locked and Loaded, Digital Force Bag, uh, a handful of others. Stranger is one of my favourite apps. I absolutely love The Stranger. I got it at Blackpool 2020. And I'm so glad that The Stranger supports in here because that is brilliant. Um, but this book has introduced me to the Architect of Predictions, or TAP, uh, which is created by the same guy who created the shortcut for the iPhone uh method of uh, of doing the, the, the routine and, uh, uh, that we talked about the basic method he actually came up with the um with the, with the shortcut and and the architect predictions is brilliant and you know why i bought it i bought it after watching the download to this book and watching what the architect prediction could do and in his little section so what dave's done is in the download he's got each app developer to talk about their app and talk about how to integrate their app into Pi Revelations, which was really super smart of Dave. And uh, the guy that created TAP, uh, what he does is he actually goes through how his app works and talks about how, not just how to integrate um, Pi Revelations, but also how to how it works with a playing card and how it works with everything. And this isn't a review of the architect predictions, but I'm gonna tell you right now, I think it's one of the best apps I've ever seen. Imagine having anybody think of a card and then you can immediately just take your phone and you say, you know, I've got a, a photo here and they open up the photo and it's timestamped from wherever you want it to be timestamped from. And it's timestamped of you holding that card. I'm going to do that with Ryland. I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to talk about my son. I'm going to have Ryland holding a playing card and, and it's going to be the card that the person's names. I'm going to think that's brilliant. But the support with the architect predictions with this is brilliant because you can have somebody, uh, you can do the whole routine that I just performed for you. But when you get to the part where you tell them the page number their secret information is on, instead of telling them that, you say, well, I took a picture of myself the other day. Look at this. And you show the picture in the, in the uh, camera roll. You zoom in on it. And on that picture is the, is the page number, is the, um, uh, the line and the position of the number that they're thinking of. I mean, that's just insane. That is just insane. So I love the architect prediction. I really do. There's a whole bunch of other... Uh, integration in there as well. I Unlock Your Mind is in there. Uh, Calculon is in there. Whole bunch of stuff. And there's some, I'm not going to go into the app support. What I advise you to do is if you get this, watch the whole download. The temptation is to stop watching the download after the basic method and go and set that up. But I watch the whole download, including all the information on all of the different apps. And I kind of watched them all. And it was fascinating. It was really fascinating, actually. And then off the back of that, I then bought Tap, which is not cheap. It's £75, but I was like, I need this in my life. And, and I'll probably be using the Architect Predictions as the way to do this. Because as much as I love the, the presentation that I just showed you, I think it's so much stronger to show that picture in your camera roll at the very end. Um, I think that's, that's absolutely great. And you could even then, if you wanted to, WhatsApp them over the picture or, you know, email them the picture and have in there your contact details. There's a lot of uh, ways that you can go with marketing. So there you go. So that is Pi Revelations. I have to say, uh, I think this is absolutely brilliant. And I know that there's going to be people watching this saying, well, you're saying that because it's David Penn. No, I'm saying that because I absolutely love this product. You know, I, I'll be the first person to say a lot of what Dave brought out is brilliant. Some amazing stuff that Dave brought out. Some stuff does a couple of things that haven't been that great. And I've told him about that openly. But the majority of stuff that Dave brings out is absolutely incredible. He really thinks about a product. And as I say, this has got the advantage of being a product that he wasn't even going to sell. He bought it out for his own act. Um, and we're lucky enough to actually have access to this. I'm going to be calling Dave. 
uh, and I'm going to be getting a second one of these books. And I've talked about this on the channel before. When I find something I absolutely love, I get backups because I don't ever want to be in a situation where I haven't got a backup of something and then they're not available and don't know, Dave runs out of stock and they can't get reprinted or whatever it may be. So I'm going to get a backup of one of these while I can. And maybe I'll have one that's walk around. I'll have one that I'll throw in my cabaret case. But this is something that I could do walk around. I could do big table. This is something I could do uh, on stage. I could do it as a front of cloth piece at an illusion show. And you know, we've talked about how um, we've talked about people getting on stage in the past and how do you go out and you perform on stage? Well, you go to a close-up job and you perform a trick to everyone at the end of the, uh, at the, end of the night. This is pack small plays big. You just throw this into your case and if you want to do like a, a seven or eight, an eight minute mind-blowing routine to a massive room, you just pull this out at the end and you just do this and it kills. So yeah, um, I've got nothing else to say about this. This is getting 100% from me. Uh, I think it's the best version of Pi. Anybody who's saying, oh, this is similar to this, and this is similar to this, and this is similar to this, you don't know what you're talking about because I've studied Vincent Hedan's book. I've studied this, and this could not be further away from anything else that has been brought out in Pi. Anything is out, anything. It's just completely different. And it's, I hate using this term because it happened, it's a term that's used all the time, but I'm going to use it. This is a game changer. This is something that I know is going to go into my act. It's going to stay into my act for a very long time. It's 100%. So there you go. Now, if you heard in the interview, Dave is doing a special offer at the moment where if you buy it directly from worldmagicshop.com, uh, and I'll put a link down below and in the description, uh, he's also going to send you a free DVD out, which is completely mental by Tom Wright and Aaron. And, um, Completely Mental is a DVD that I've seen, and it is. Those two guys, when you go together, they are completely mental. So you're going to get that free from Dave if you order it directly from Dave. If you don't, And he does ship worldwide, but you don't have to. It is available in all good dealers because Murphy jumped on this in a heartbeat, and as they should, because it's brilliant. So there you go. It's getting 100% from me. It's incredible. It's highly recommended. It is the absolute definition of pack small, plays big. And the only problem Mr. Penn has now is how does he top this? How do you top this? This is a worker's dream. I, I said that to him after Coinvex. I was like, right, you're done now, mate. There's nothing you can do that's ever going to touch uh, Coinvex. And he managed it a few times over and over again. And I remember when 52 and 1 came out with him and Wayne Fox. And I was like, that's it, boys. There's no way you're going to be able to top that. You've peaked. And now he's, uh, he's topped it again. He's absolutely topped it again and I'm calling it right now it is going to be very difficult for David Penn to come close to bring in something out in the future that is as good as this but we'll see if anybody can prove me wrong it's David Penn guys thank you very much for watching the review show special don't forget to tune back in tomorrow on Monday we have a video at two o'clock we have a short we have a video at six o'clock we have a live and then at nine o'clock we have another five by five which is a lot of people are saying their favorite video of the week. So uh, if you want to see more videos like this, do me a favor, leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, like the video, do all that fun, cool, awesome stuff. And I will be back again tomorrow um, with another three videos. I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.